Greetings everyone, welcome to this new live uh, dedicated to Mongolia, to, dedicated to the Ikil, to the Merhor, to Mongol music, melody, the Tatlak, B, uh, Urtindo, all that. So I'm very glad to see you uh, here again. I hope that you had a nice week, that all is fine that you could practice and practice the previous things that we saw uh, in the live number 20 which was all the um, how to say the gallop the paces of the horse so i hope that you could practice that and that you enjoyed maybe today you will come with a few new questions about the things that we saw in that live so, as you can see uh, in the title, today we will see a uh, tatlak. So it's a small, a small tatlak uh, coming from the ethnic group, the tribe uh, that live in the west of Mongolia, which is called Zachchin. So Zachchin is the name of the tribe, of the ethnic group, the same as Bayat, as we saw the previous B. <clears throat> so we will see a Tatlak melody, which is a little bit small, but I really like it. Zachchin Toja Gelin. So I will uh, now the time for the, the people to join uh, the live. I will, I would say, I will just play it a little bit for you uh, so you can hear and all that and I hope that it will be interesting uh, then I will give you some information as usual and we will get to see this Tatlak uh, in detail so hello Magne thanks for joining hello Bodro <laughs> so maybe I can uh, put the, the camera a little bit further so you can see also the instrument the bow so i will play it for you now on the ikil because that's a ikil iklin tatlak so it's like a tatlak for ikil not for murder so i will play it first on the ikil i mean not for the murder it, it it's originally played on the ikil uh, so that's why i play on the ikil now then i will kind of convert for you guys so you can play it on the murderer okay hey blaviken thanks for joining so zachin toja gezin So that was uh, the Tatlak Toja Gilin from the tribe, uh, the ethnic groups. I, I am not sure exactly how we say now. Uh, so the, the ethnic groups are tribe from Zachchin, which uh, live in the west of Mongolia. So um, hey there, Nikolai Kalmos. Thanks for joining us on the live. So before getting into uh, learning all this little uh, subtlety and all that, I just want to say that the next live will be Hoton Takmo. Uh, 
Um, and I thought that this tall jagged line, as you can see, the bow is very long. A lot of things are going on on only one bow. So I thought that maybe this tall jagged line could be a next step um, before going to the Takmo or, or new things. So I think that um, having this mood of very long bow and a lot of things going on on only one bow can also really help you uh, get more in this Western attitude, the, the, the Mongol uh, B and Tatlar and all that. So I thought that as I love this melody. I really love this melody. I find it very joyful, very interesting. Uh, and I thought that it could be a, a nice next step uh, to add to your skills, uh, to your knowledge and all that. So that's why I choose uh, this little tatlak uh, today. So now I will talk a little bit about uh, this uh, tatlak, where it's coming from and all that, how I learned it and, and, and stuff like that. So um, this tatlak was collected or uh, recorded by Dorchtag uh, Myagmar Suren. Uh, he's my Urtindo teacher. I already mentioned him uh, in some lives and in the in the show Into the Murder World. So he recorded um, this tatlak from. Uh, let me take my notes. Kom jau enkbaltsen which lives in Hoft Hamak uh, in Manghang Som, so in the province of Hoft, in the locality kind of Manghang. Okay, so uh, he, he recorded that tatlak from this person, this guy, which live uh, in, the, in the west of Mongolia. Um, and the thing that is interesting with this Tatlar is that I have absolutely no other recording of this uh, Tatlar. I don't have any other recording, any other videos or any other uh, melodies or, or, or stuff for this Tatlar. So I think that it's a pretty rare uh, piece of culture. So that's why also I wanted to share it uh, today. I actually uh, called this Komjau, uh, which lives in the countryside. I managed to find his cord, his his, uh, his phone number, so I, I could call it to ask a little bit about this uh, Tatlar, the meanings and, and all that. So the thing that he talked, he told me, is that uh, he learned it from his father, uh, so from very young age, uh, with many many other melodies and all that so i i think in the recording that uh Dorstag made there is around 10 melodies uh, played by this person um, and Tojagelin really uh sounded interesting to me so that's why uh, i'm sharing it now and the thing is that he learned all those melodies from his father but uh, when I asked about the meaning, what it is, uh, is it about horse? Is it about a singer or dancer or something else? He could not answer me, unfortunately. So I cannot say um, exactly what is the meaning of this melody. Also, I don't know um, if there is word or not. Uh, I could not find any uh, information about that. So. If by chance in the future, when I play this song, someone say, hey, it's the Jagelin, I know what it is and all that. Uh, if I get new information, I ask to a lot of person and, and it seems that it's a very, very rare uh, melody. So I could not find too many um, information. So if in the future we all know this melody and eventually we play and someone recognize it and gives information that that would be so great to actually make it uh, to revive it somehow. And if I find uh, information after this live letter, I will put a comment below and I will pin the comment so it can move up and you can get uh, the extra piece of information or I would put it in the description or update on my uh, blog on the on the website. Anyway, I'm a little bit sad on the side that I don't have too much information about this melody, but the meaning and all that. But as it's kind of a rarity, 
I thought that it could be interesting to share it. And also, um, I think that it's, uh, it's a, a step uh, forward uh, in terms of difficulty compared to what we saw previously. So that, that's the reason I made that choice. The thing that I can tell you about this Toja Gelen is that maybe Toja is a name, the name of a person. And Gelen is kind of like maybe, you know, the Jore Gelen, Jore Gelen, Jore Gelen, Jore Gelen. So basically, it's my, it might be a song uh, about that, that describe a person which would be named Toja. Maybe, uh, because the Gelen, Gelen, uh, Gene, it's kind of like saying we are talking about someone. We said it's Jore, we said it's Jore, or something like that when it's Jore Gelden, Jore Gelden. So maybe it would be we said it's Toja, we said it's Toja, something like that. So there might be uh, words on that. So it's a little bit of a treasure, a treasure hunt for this melody, but. Again, as it's kind of rare, I thought that it could be interesting to, to share it. So, uh, hello, Yusuf, thanks for joining. So I don't know uh, if any of you guys have uh, questions, if you feel like sharing something, asking something before we get in, the, in, in learning this new melody, this new tatlak. I just realized that it was a very long introduction. Oh, thanks. All is great, all is great. Okay. So now I, I, I made a little map uh, as usual for the melody, as you can see here. Um, as you can see, it's very simple in terms of bow, of bowing. It's only four bows. Um, I try to, to think how to decompose all that, but actually, even though it's very similar, it's also very different. Uh, so it's kind of four different sentences. So A, B, C, and D. Uh, four different sentences. I, I, I could not find things that are actually similar that I could decompose. And as, as it's only one bow per sentence, that's also a little bit difficult to, to decompose. So that's why also this exercise might be very interesting for you guys, uh, because it's really gonna make, um, I would say, your practice goes a lot with your hearing, okay? So um, I would suggest you that if you, are learn if you will learn this song, maybe share it on the Discord when you feel that it's close to the to the finished version so we can check all together uh, if all the parts are accurate if some something is missing or or so on that would be uh, really interesting so for the structure basically the tatlar is composed of four different sentences and each each sentence is uh, played with one bow one kind of long bow okay so that's kind of it uh, for the, the, the structure. So now we can uh, play it on the motherboard. So I will uh, play it. I need to switch my brain a little bit uh, to go on the motherboard, okay? So I will just play it a little bit, a little while on the motherboard so I can get into uh, the, the mood of the murder as you as you know the ikel and the murder the the strings are reversed so I started so Magne I started practicing to play with such a long bow last week would be awesome to finally apply this skill yeah this um, this little melody uh, really gonna make you I would say improve uh, decomposing your movement. So having a very long bow and having kind of a lot of things going on with your left hand. So the bow is going for a while and while it's going, there is a lot of things going on on this side, okay? So let me, 
played for you and practiced a little bit at the same time just because I, I mostly only played on the ikef. So I need to to get in the maror in the mood of the maror. Okay. See, might be one more question. Aha, yeah, it feels awesome definitely. <laughs> you will see that um just I, I will just quickly give this this info kind of this feeling you will see that actually playing with a longbow is incredibly relaxing that's also why i really enjoy this uh this melody because there is very very there is a lot of things going on in the melody but the bow is going super slow it's it's the the full tatlak is only four bows but still there is a lot of things going on so i find it super super interesting uh that the bow is going so little uh there is not back and forth not a lot of back and forth but still we have a rich melody with a lot of variation so definitely that's something that can be played many many times um in the in the recording uh Hombo Chao plays it, I think, four, four or five times. Um, so I, I guess that it might have words and we can play it uh, maybe three times, five times, six times, uh, whatever we want. Also, he makes some little variation with the bow sometimes. So sometimes he decomposes one bow and he plays two. So I guess there is also a bit of freedom on that. And the last, uh, basically the, the three first bow are almost exactly the same on the different time he plays it. But the last one tend to change a little bit. So I guess that the, fir the three first bow are a little bit um, strict, if I could say strict, but the last bow, the last conclusive bow of the melody a little bit more uh, free so let's let's uh, get into it <laughs> switch done also another things another thing that is interesting is that we we will play actually today our first double finger chord on the murderer i don't think that we saw that uh, previously maybe we saw this but i think we didn't so actually this will be the first time we play a chord on the murderer so just to give you an idea of this chord, I will play it now for you because it, it kind of comes a lot in the melody. So if you are directly ready with it to learn the different sentence, that will be a little bit easier. Okay, so this little chord, I have no idea the name of the chord and so on. As you know, I, I don't have a music theory, um, how to say music theory knowledge. So I will show you as usual. So we play, we use the second finger and the pinky. 
Okay, so the second finger takes the position. Um, if I play the scale, so basically the second finger take the position, uh, the natural position between the first and third finger. Okay. And the little, so on the lower string, okay? And the little finger So, yeah, then So I will maybe close up a little bit on the finger on this part so as you can see only the second finger not using uh, this uh, the third finger okay so this one is not touching okay Maybe I can play the, the whole melody a little bit so you, you have the zoom here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I was like, oh, hello, Dejang. Uh, hello, Unu. Thanks for joining. Happy to have you here. And Magne Ho, I played Discord acc accidentally when I improvised. Yeah, that's awesome. I was like, oh, so nice. Might be a thing they actually uh, use. And Magne, I love this Tatlach. Uh, so much, yeah, it's super, it's super cool. This Tatlar is, is very short, very simple, but it, it's super expressive somehow. I think that the fact that the bow is very slow, uh, it's, it's really, I don't know, there, there is something super interesting in this Tatlar. So, so yeah, I thought that was really worth it to, to share it. And just for the chord, um, this chord can also be played like this. E. So you see first and third finger. In our case, that's gonna be a little bit tricky to play it like that because we will need the first finger to go on the higher string here. So to make the switch, that would be a little bit uncomfortable like. See? That, that that's a uh, that's um that's a little bit tricky. Usually this chord we play it with the first and third finger, um, but for this case, it's more comfortable, in my opinion. Okay, uh, it's more comfortable to use the second and 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 fourth finger. So um, it's easier, a little bit easier, and a little bit more intuitive uh, to play on the ikel. I will show. At the end, when we finish all the sentence, uh, a little bit zoom on the, the finger when I play it on the ikel. I don't want to get messed up and, and go from maruhur, ikel, maruhur, maruhur, ikel, so on. So I will show you a little bit on the ikel uh, at the end. Okay. If I forget, please uh, remind me. So um, I think that it might be best if I keep the, the camera a little bit in close up like that. Um, so you can see the, the fingers. So I will go with that. If you feel that you need the bow, um, tell me, I will, I will zoom out. But I think that uh, it might be more easy for you to learn uh, if you have the zoom on the, if you are closer to the finger. So let me know for that if I need to, to zoom out a little bit so you can also have the bow 
uh, together, okay? So, we can see the first sentence, the first of the four uh, sentences, if I could say. So, sentence A. One bow, okay? Again. Okay, now I will play it a little bit in slow motion. One more time. Again. One more time. So, um, I think that being in slow motion like that should be enough. Basically, I'm not sure that uh, there is an importance on doing it like that or like that. On the recording, he used the flicking, not the hammering, not the zochit. Uh, on the Mölrur, with the position, doing the flick might be a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, so keep trying to go for the flicking, this one, and not the Zockelt, okay? On the Ikelt, that's super easy uh, to do it like that. That's super intuitive. But on the Mölrur, might be a little bit more. Uh, you, as you might have seen, sometimes I did the flick, sometimes I did the Zockelt out of habit. Because on this, usually, we use uh, for the Jora. We use the Tsokhut a lot, so, a lot. so uh, I, I kind of did it out of habit. But try to keep it uh, with the flick. So let's do it again a few more times, a little bit slowly. So um, I will still, as you see, pull. Do the sentence, stop, then go back, pull, stop, pull. So the bow will always be in the right direction for this sentence, okay? So first sentence again, now we practice a little bit, maybe a dozen times, a little bit slowly. Now let's play the second sentence, okay? So I will do it A and B together. Okay, so that's the B. Now let's see the B. As you can see, there is this chord coming a lot uh, in this melody, so it also making uh, it, it also makes it sound uh, very um, original compared to what we usually play. So, B sentence. We start with the tip of the bow and we will push. One more time. time. One more time, a little bit slowly now. One more time.
Okay? So now that we have the A and B sentence, we can play the A and B sentence together maybe a few times. Okay, I will just drink a bit, see if anyone got some reaction. Okay, so A and B sentence. Maybe I play it once just to refresh and then we play it slowly a few times. Okay, one more time. Okay, so now that we saw those two a little bit normal. Let's play it together a few times, a little bit slowly. Okay, I, I guess that should be enough. So now we can play this A and B sentence together a few times again, just like we just did, but in a more real, normal uh, tempo and, and, and attitude. So, it was the A and B sentence. Just a quick reminder, as you see, structure is very simple. So now we can move to uh, the C part, C and D. So first I will, be a, I will do A, B, C, also for me to get into it for the C. Then we will see the C. We will see the C uh, together slowly. So awesome. <laughs> so the C. So this will really, this little sentence, as you can see, that's only one bow, only one pull, okay? And it's really, really, really gonna help you coordinate all those fingers because 
the little pinky is doing a very uh, regular flicking. Uh, so it's like bam, 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 one, two, three. But the first finger is kind of out of it, going in, going out. So it's also very interesting. And the feeling while playing it is also super nice. Um, so let's get into this part slowly. Together, the last one. Now, real tempo, just this C, C sentence. I think that that should be enough for to for the decomposition and all that of this uh, C part. And now we can see the last one, the D sentence. So I will play it A, B, C, D. Then we will see C, D together a little bit slowly, a little bit faster and then all together. few uh, variation that he played in the recording so also I don't know if uh, those little variation comes from the, the real version of the melody or if it's just a little mistake a little hesitation while he's playing because maybe he didn't play the song for a while which will which happen sometimes so I think that it's the second one, uh, kind of like thinking and making a, a subtle change in the ornamentation, in the decoration, um, because the change are very, uh, very small. Uh, so I think that it's just another way to decorate uh, the, the, the last sentence. So um, yeah, that was just to, to, to explain why there is a few little version. That's my uh, uh, that's my thought. So now we can do C and D together a little bit slowly first. Let's use this version uh, for the practice. Then when we will play uh, the, the, the song many few times, I will change a little bit uh, the last sentence so you can also see the different variation and then practice uh, this differ dif different variation. So let's do C and D a few times a little bit slowly now. slowly Oh. 
now we can play for the, the C and D kind of for real. So that was C and D. So now we can play A, B, C, D, the full melody, maybe a few times slowly. Uh, maybe slowly I will play it close to the, to, the, to the finger so you can play it slowly and checking what's going on with the finger. And when we play it for real, I will unzoom so you can also see uh, what's going on with the bow. I will not explain again the little balance and waving and all that because now uh, you should know and you should understand as we saw it a few times in the previous live so it will be a little bit more uh, direct so let's play this Tatlach Toja Gelin fully A, B, C, D the four different bows the four different sentence and we play it now a little bit slowly so we can make the, jun the junction with all those sentences and then we will play it uh, kind of for real. <laughs> So that was to Jagelden. So now we can play it uh, kind of for real. So I will unzoom a little bit uh, so you can see also what's going on with the bow. What um, up, okay, yeah, I think that's kind of fine like that. What uh Hombo Chao plays is way to play it with the bow is not doing too much wave, too much flaying on the bow. That's very straightforward. Uh, what I add, what I do uh, because I like it, I add a little bit of accent on the bow, a little bit of waving to give this melody a little bit of punch um, because I, I do like it, uh, as I don't really have the meaning of the melody, I don't know if it's authorized or not, um, but I think it's fine, uh, because it sounds also a little bit more richer, uh, in my opinion, with all those accents and all that, so it doesn't uh, put too much accent, uh, there is a little bit of it on it. I do a little bit more 
than what it does because I feel that it gives uh, the melody a little bit more of um, dynamic. So, oh, hello, Andreas. So now that we saw uh, all those sentences, uh, the A, B, C, D, now we saw all those slowly, we can uh, see the full tatlak in its uh, full length and kind of mood. Uh, so I can also, you can also see what's going on with the bow. Uh, as I said just previously, the last sentence, uh, I will change it a little bit. I will do the few variation uh, that he does in the, in the recording. So let's get to it and play it a few times. I think that this tatlar is very joyful and it's, it's super cool. So I, I, I mean, we can play like 10, 15 times and it's still not uh, annoying or anything. It's always super, I don't know, that's very meditative. Uh, peaceful, that swinging and all that. So let's get to it. Zachin Toja Gelen. So that was Zachin Toja Gelen on the Murugur. So as uh, I'm not forgetting, as I said, this tatlak uh, is originally played on the ikel. So as you all know, the the ikel uh, the ikel as is uh, strings. Reverse it. So now I will play it on the ikel. No, I can uh, put a little bit closer to the to the strings. So we maybe a little bit on the strings, the focus a little bit on the strings, and that all together. So you can see also what's going on with the bow, um, because I think it's also interesting that you see uh, how it's comfortable to be played on the ikel. So, zachin to jagelen. mistake <laughs> I need to switch the brain <laughs> okay <laughs> are you oh god ah. 
That's life. <laughs> Maybe just one, so you can also see what's going on uh, with the bow. Then I saw a few questions. So oh, that was Toja uh, Gilin, Zachin Toja Gilin. So I saw there was some question. So tell me uh, if you are happy to learn this new Tatlak, even though that was a little bit short. I think that it's still uh, quite interesting. There is a lot of new skills, a lot of new things, the chord, longbow, uh, and the, the ornament and all that. So I think that it's, uh, it's, it's, it was interesting. At least I, I really like the, the melody. So if you have any question, any things that you want to ask or request, uh, well, that's the time. So I see Andreas. Hello, Andreas. How are you? Thanks for joining. <laughs> Sorry, I was in the in in the in the sharing of the melody, so I didn't uh, quote you directly. So um, Andreas, ho oh, oh, I'm late. Hello, and he asked, uh, did the ancient Mongols use rosin on the bow of earlier version of the Merhor? If they didn't, what did they use? Well, um, that's a nice question. That's interesting. Uh, in old time, well, that's something first about the instrument. Um, that's something that is not totally clear. Uh, we are not sure. I mean, we, um, the researcher and all that, we are not totally certain of um the first instrument if it was a ikil if it was a murhor in my opinion i think that it was a ikil the first was the ikil hey ernesto thanks for joining i'm very glad to see you here um so yeah it, it's uh it's a little bit we are not super sure about um, the first version if it was a ikil or a murhor um, there is a lot of chance that actually the two might have kind of come together, but the Ikil was more in the west and the Murhur was more in the east. 
uh, or maybe the ekel started way el earlier because actually in the area of where we have the ekel in Mongolia, in, in Mongolia, which is the west of the current uh, geography of Mongolia, so close to Tuva, close to Kazakhstan, uh, close to the Kalmuk, uh, Kyrgyz, and and this and Xinjiang and all that. So this area actually has the 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 Kobuz from the Kazakh. Also, there is the Alte, the Republic of Alte. They have also the Ikili. The I hope I I say it correctly. Um, the the Tuvan, as you all know, they have the Igil or Egil. Uh, the Mongols. So in the west of Mongolia, they have the Ikel. So basically, these two string instrument uh, with the box and all that in that area, all those countries, they have their own version. So there is a lot of chance that it started there. Um, and, and they just, as they all have their own custom uh, culture and decoration, ornament and, and, and art things, they made different shapes. That's my opinion. Huh? There is, we don't have, I mean, I, I never saw any concrete study that affirm that the Ikel was first or the Kobus was first or the Tuvan Ikel or, and there is no uh, archeological found, finds right now. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very difficult to say uh, so it might be super old or it might be also not that old. Uh, so yeah, the only thing that uh, we have for sure is that in the Mongolian notes of show, in the history of the secret history of Mongols, there is a, 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 a part that talk about um, a bard kind of uh, a person that is that was advising Chinggis Khan. Uh, and it said that he has a murderer, but was it translated later into murderer? Because usually in all texts, the word used was only whore. So it might have been uh, a murderer, it might have been a nickel, it might have been a tofshore. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult. I saw a few studies that talk about that and in a lot of texts, it's only written hor, and sometimes it was referring to the tafshur. Sometimes it was even referring to the lim uh, to the tsor. So it's uh, usually that was for the tafshur, but so it's it's a little bit difficult. And as you ask that about the murderer and, and ancient murderer and all that, I wanted to give you a little bit of of information about that. Uh, the thing is, the murder and the ikil, as you all know, uh, they have the, the the strings are reversed. On the murder, there is the horse head, and the, on the ikil, there is uh, the chanman. So the chanman is the, this symbol. Okay, so it's also it's also quite different. Uh, to get back to the question about the rosin, they used rosin. In some legend, especially in some version of uh, the creation of the Marur, so not Huhunamjil, uh, because Huhunamjil, there is a lot of chance that it's a modern uh, children tale, fairy tale. Uh, there is older tales and legend uh, about the, the, the creation of the Marur and the creation of the Ikil. I actually found a little book that have uh, that has maybe five or six small legends uh, that talk about the creation of the murderer, the creation of the Ikil. Uh, I will meet the, the author of this book uh, hopefully in the next week or two weeks. And as those legends are not too long, I will, if she, uh, she agree, uh, I will make a translation and I will share that the legend on my website. So you will have it directly in Mongol and in English. So I will not spoil it right now uh, and, and tell all those, uh, all these legend uh, right now. Um, but in those legend, they talk about, of course, the, the, um, the strings that are made of many uh, hair of, of the horse. Sometimes it's the tail, sometimes it's the mane. Uh, 
Uh, and they also talk about the rosin. So obviously back in old time, uh, for sure, that was not the, the rosin that we use right now, which is super clean, super uh, efficient and all that. Uh, that. That might have been very simple, very um, uh, uh, rough, uh, old rosin. So not uh, put in shape that might be not, that might have been very rough kind of piece of rock of the of the rosin, you know, uh, not the, the nice rectangular circular round uh, thing that we have now, but they from the, the very old legend in in old in all this old legend, um, they talk about either the instrument is not making sound because it lacks uh hair on the strings or because the bow doesn't have any rosin so to get the better sound we need to add hair on the strings or and add rosin on the bow so to answer your question uh yeah they they always used uh as far as it goes uh they always used rosin to make the grip uh, against the between the bow and the strings even in old time so in one of the legend that i have uh, it said that it was from 2000 years ago so is it true or not i'm not sure because some people said that the bow was invented around 700 or 800 but the legend talk about bowed instrument and the legend is supposed to be 2000 years old. So I'm a little bit like, uh, what is going on? <laughs> so, so yeah, but as far as I saw the rosin, they always talk about it uh, in, the, in the legend connected with the horsehair, the bow and all that. So I hope that it, answer, it answers the question, Andres about the rosine and, and all that. So do you guys have a few other questions? How did you like this um, new tatlaq? Zakhchin, Todja Gaitlin. How was it? Is it interesting? How do you feel about it? The mood and all that? Was it clear? Was it clear enough? Uh, do you need me to to show uh, to show other things about this uh, tatlar? Some details that are not clear. Um, I know that uh, now some of you might have been practicing together and tried to see uh, and play it at the same time. So, uh, do you have any interrogation or issue with playing this tatlar? Um, also. The plan for the next uh, live is the Hoton Takmo. Um, so there is, I, I learned it from the, the son of Badran. Um, he showed me, he gave me also some lyrics, but I have also two, two or three other uh, recordings and stuff that I need to check a little bit um, to eventually show you two or three versions. Um, of the Takmo, so I will. We will get into it um, in the next live. That's gonna be also super interesting. So today's Toja Gelding was a little bit of a step forward to get ready uh, for the for the for the hot Takmo. So yeah, a magne. I can't stop singing the melody of this tatlak yeah i know <laughs> this tatla is super like mesmerizing it's like <laughs> so yeah i love it too it, it um, that's something you know that is super awesome with the tatlak like that sometimes they are so small so short but even though it's so short they express so many things uh it's it's like a uh, I don't know, that's pure magic. This only four bows, I mean, <laughs> it's super short thing. And still in, 
in such a small amount of time and and bowing it, it's all it's expressing a lot of things and playing it 10 times 50 times it, it's it's still like joyful and enjoying so it, it's like uh yeah it's super great um andreas what tuning did you play in for the intro to the for you gonna for the intro to into the murder it seems very low is it lower than cg i have no idea i don't know what i what i used um for the into the murder uh introduction uh probably the murder just tuned itself um I, 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 it might be a G, but I, I don't know. I, my instru I don't use a tuning application on the, or a tuner anymore for now, almost two or three years. I just let my instrument tune by themselves. Sometimes they are super low, sometimes they are higher. They just take the, um, the tuning that they want on the, on the day. Uh, so yeah, I, sorry, I, I don't use tuning application or anything like that. So I cannot tell you exactly what is, it is. The thing is, ah, it might be lower because I tuned it not on a, le on a A440, but A432. When I did some recordings back then, uh, my tuning, yeah, it was in 432. So it might be a little bit lower. Uh, but that's a super long time ago and yeah i don't remember i might have yeah no i don't i think that i might have uh used the tuning app uh for the cd the the e ep that is on my website with seven uh melodies i think that i used the um, i used the a tuning application for that and but it was in 432 so it might have been lower a little bit lower, maybe a third of tone or something like that. That that might be why. Yeah, I'm just remembering now. <laughs> um, Blaviken, I will watch the live again for practicing such amazing melody. Yes, I'm so glad. Uh, Tatlar are so wonderful. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, Blaviken. This Tatlar, the, the Tatlar that we played today, to, um, yeah, Toja Gaitling, that's a very rare piece so far. I as I as I know, because even with some people from the countryside, I asked, I played it for them, and they were like, Oh, um, I'm not sure. No, I don't know this one, and, and so on. I even asked to two or three persons that are also Zachin. Uh, and one told me that he barely heard about it. And then he actually gave me the, the contact and the phone number of the person that was in the recording. Uh, so it, it might be uh, super rare. So we are actually, uh, by playing this melody, really saving uh, something that is, is, uh, is dying, you know, and being forgotten. So that's, that, that's even more awesome. I, I, I mean, it's super, it's super cool. Uh, so yeah, this Tatlar is super awesome. Whoa, 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 whoa. there is a lot of things going on. Uh, hello, Crazy Grim 109. Uh, Thanks for joining. Uh, hi, Steve. Currently, I'm saving up for a murderer. Hope to get one from your website, website soon. Since horse archery already made a big hole, <laughs> a big hole in my wallet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. If you are making archery, you need to play metal <laughs> because it's super, it's super connected. Especially if you are playing, uh, if you are uh, doing Mongol archery, uh, you will see that there is a lot of similar similarities between the archery and the murderer. So definitely if you can if you are interested in the in the music and if you are uh, also doing archery, definitely having a murderer or a nickel uh, will be great. And if you get it from my website, definitely I'm super grateful. Uh, I'm looking forward to serve you and and provide you with a, a good instrument. Uh, so just let me know. Uh, you can you can join the Discord. You can get in touch with me on the Discord or you can join me uh, on, on the Telegram. I have Telegram also, uh, which I use to handle my customers. So you can join me there. 
and and definitely uh welcome we can talk about it anytime you want hello william uh, is that a Dombra on the wall? Oh, I say that uh, Magne already answered. Yeah, that's uh, that's not really a Dombra. Uh, that's not really a Dombra. That's kind of like a souvenir instrument, as Magne uh, said. It's not really uh, real. It's more like a toy for kids. So it's for the decoration. But yeah, that's kind of a Dombra. Uh, Ernesto, hey again. Uh, have you thought about writing a book about the murder war in English? Um, what kind of book? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Uh, depend on what kind of book. Um, do you mean a book for learning the murder war? Uh, or... Um, or or some or something else like tell me what what kind of book you have in mind ernesto i would be glad to to answer in detail this question uh blaviken yeah i that's so cool we are saving the culture yeah we are we you are guys actually uh by contributing by playing by learning by feeling all that and 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 spreading it uh, where you are living, that's awesome. That these melo that these melodies actually not are not only living uh, in the the very close area of the west of Mongolia, but it's also playing in Ukraine, in France. Uh, I think there is Russia. Russia. We have Spain. Italy, uh, England, basically kind of all, almost all Europe, Germany, um, and of course in the States. So basically those melodies are being carried away with the wind across all the world. So that's, uh, that's super, 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 that, that's super great. That's super awesome. I mean, that's super, super awesome. Um, so yeah. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> uh, William, I got a top shore a while ago. It's very similar to Dombr and plays really nice. I like, I'll take a photo later. Yeah, William, please share, share with us uh, your instrument on the Discord. On the Discord, that would be great. So all the community could also see. Uh, that's always great to, to get uh, the... Um, the, the picture of uh, different instruments so we can see uh, how the different maker of different area they make the instrument and all that so definitely that would be that would be super nice and if you share the picture on the on the discord share the head some detail maybe tell us how you got this instrument did you visit the country did you get it there did you buy it from internet or anything so so that would be super nice to to get to get to know all that and if some of you or other person also want to share uh their instrument how they get it their the story of the instrument definitely that would be that would be super cool uh to have the stories of all those horses <laughs> Чиний видео надад маш их тусалж байгаа. Амжилт хүсье. За, тан тусалж байгаа бол би үнэхээр баяртай байна. Тэгээд нэгдсэн баярлаа. Асуу юм байвал а чөлөөтэй асуугаараа би бол би бор нөгөө дуртай хариулна. Хэрвээ би мэдсэн бол мэдэж. Би бас сурж байгаа, суудалж байгаа. Тэгээд энэ од цамбаж яв энд ирсэн үдсэн гэлалаа танд um ernesto again excuse me a book about history and culture mainly and if it can be uh to learn to play ah i see i see well and er ernesto um basically that's kind of what i'm going i'm doing with those live uh with the i don't know if you i don't know how much you know about what i already shared uh, for the past few years uh, just to make a little uh, short sum up, um, there is the Into the Murderhood um, show uh, on YouTube. There is a playlist for that, that talk about 
history of the motherboard, the symbolism. There is a lot of information about where it's coming from and also how to play it, all the basics, basically. There is two more, uh, two more episodes to come to finish the, the, the serial. Um, that will give you, that gives you actually uh, the, the, all the basics on how to hold the, the bow, the difference between uh, the traditional holding, modern holding, uh, how to use the fingers, how to tune, how to... There is so many information in, in such a small amount of episodes. So basically, I don't feel like making a book for that because making a book, uh, making a book is... is that's not going to be super accurate because you will just see uh, it's not going to be super interactive. Uh, a lot of things will get lost between the book and the person that will read it. I already saw a dozen of books that shows how to play the murderer and they are all copying, uh, taking the things from the other book and duplicating and in my opinion, it's not helpful. It didn't help me. That was super useless. So I'm not very fan of the book. Second reason is that all those melodies, they have a lot of little ornament and all that. And now we live in 2020. One, <laughs> there is YouTube, there is internet. We can make video recording. We can make audio recording. So in my opinion, we need, we must share all this content in a living form uh, it's it's uh that's what is lacking because you you might be able to read something in the book okay put your first finger on the wood and put your other fingers on the on the hair okay and then so what you cannot see how it is and all that so if you watch the video that i made there is detail it's in three three dimension you can check, I make the movement. So you really have the real hand. And for the melodies, some melodies have been uh, transcribed on paper using the European notation, which is not, in my opinion, um, fine and good for this kind of music because the murderer, the B, Tatla, they have, again, a lot of decoration, a lot of ornament, a lot of things that have no writing for the European modern notation. So why take the time to make something that is not um, made for this music? Why using European notation to, to transliterate, transcribe uh, music that is coming from Middle Asia, from Mongolia? Uh, it's stupid. In my opinion, that is 100% stupid especially now that we can make videos that are million times more understandable, uh, more, more accurate. And, and so I'm not planning to make any book to, to learn to make the to learn to play the murder because in my opinion, I find it super stupid. Uh, and I find it stupid because it's going to lose too much uh, between the book and the reader, too many things will be lost uh, because of the constraint of the paper, of the European music notation and, and the lack of a concrete example and all that. So I will keep sharing uh, melodies and how to learn, but I will keep doing it with videos and recording because I think that it's how it should be. Uh, in all time, the person that were transmitting this music, they were not writing books. They were playing to the kids and the kids were learning directly from them. It was a living tradition. It is a living tradition. It's not something that is, that is made to be put on paper and learn like mathematics or, or stuff like that. Uh, it's it's so totally different. So that's why I'm not uh, I'm not really I'm not really uh, enthusiastic at the idea of all those people making uh, books on how to learn this this instrument. I would rather have all those people make concrete videos 
of like I do now with the live, uh, you know, sh sharing how they play, showing the details and all that. So it would be much more um, interactive, much more living, much more interesting, in my opinion. Uh, so that's for the learning uh, part of the instrument. And for the history, uh, the history, as I just said previously, um, we don't have that much uh, concrete piece of information about the history. As I said, I have a little, a little book uh, with some legend, which I hope the, the author will authorize me to share it on, on the website and, and, and share the translation. I really hope that she will uh, accept that. So I will share the content uh, on my website. Um, also, I'm not super enthusiastic at the idea of a book for that because I always get more information all the time. So I think that um, that's also a reason why the current book I'm doing is taking so long because I added things on the way I, I wanted to change. I learned new things and all that. So I think that will be my first and my last book because it's super time consuming. It's super frustrating not to be able to update the information and all that. So I find it more interactive, more interesting, more easy, uh, more easy to access being on the blog uh, that is for free. Everyone can check it. Everyone can read it. Uh, it's easy to put translation. It's easy to make a copy pass to share the information and all that. So in my opinion, in what I'm doing, trying to share all this knowledge, I think that a book is not a good a good um, environment. Uh, having videos and recording on one side for the, mu the, the musical things um, and having the blog on the other side, which I can update and I can feed on the way, on the go, as I, as I gradually get more information, I find it um, more interesting and more interactive, especially with the person, with the community and all that. And also it's free. Um, the, when I always uh, get give this example, when your grandparents taught you maybe some celebration things, some custom from your country, um, some, uh, I don't know, songs or whatever, you never paid for that. They just gave it to you. They, they told you how oh, to celebrate this, you should do that, or this is the song of this, this is the legend of that, and so on. You never paid your grandparents when they give you, when they give you uh, such an amount of, of uh, knowledge and culture. So that's why I started the book a long time ago. Um, if I would have this mindset I have now and the knowledge I have now, I would have never started this book and I would have just given everything uh, directly, gradually on the website. So that was my mistake. But I will still gonna I will still finish it, of course. Uh, the proofreading of the Mongol Bichik is at uh, seventy five percent now, so it's it's super close to 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 be over. So I hope that it answer uh, the question, uh, Ernesto, and I hope that you agree a little bit with my point of view. Um, Crazy Green. What's your favorite Mongolian food? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, I have no idea. I love the cheese. <laughs> As a French, I love the cheese, actually. Um, Alte Topshur, it's uh, William. Alte Topshur, it's similar to Mongolian, but it's strummed and nylon like the Dombre. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Uh, how about chance? I bought one back in the US and the string, strings keep getting loose though. I'm not sure I know that much about the chance. I know a little bit, but uh, not too much. Um, Blaviken, I completely agree. We can't write the soul of music on paper. Well, oh, hello Bjorn. So yeah, basically, um, actually there, there is a Tibetan writing uh, for the Urtindo, for example, which were used for mantra, um, which have a very 
interesting, weird, uh, very uncommon form uh, that might be super. It was it was created to illustrate how to sing the mantra. Um, so it was used also to write some of the melodies of the Urtindo. So as it was created to illustrate the, the mantras, it's kind of I Tokiram oh, what is the English word for Tokiram um, suitable. That was suitable uh, for these kind of things. Now we are using uh, Western, um, which Western notation, the, the Western notation is a pure intellectual mathematic uh, notation. The, the classical music is like directly connected with mathematics. It's almost a science. Um, so this notation was made for classical music. So of course it works perfectly with the with the classical music and it gives us crazy awesome things like the symphony and, and all that so i'm not uh, saying this notation is bad or anything right it's just another world when it comes to instrument like the ikil like the murhur this notation can work a little bit but so much is getting lost in the in in the process um so Maybe if we would want to write the Maruhur, the Tatlar music, the Urtindo music, uh, the, 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 the B music, uh, which is played on Maruhur or Ikel, maybe we could, we could use the Western notation with a bunch of change, uh, with some adjustment and, 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 and change and so on. So for me, I, I I don't know. I learned all that by hearing, um, by listening to other musicians, by talking with them, uh, by having exchange and interaction. And that's how it has been taught for thousands of years or at least hundreds of, of years. Uh, so I don't know why we should break this um, legacy, break this tradition to do it the Western way when we are in Mongolia, we are in Central Asia, that's another culture, that's another mindset, that's another life. Everything is different from the West. So why we need to make it Westernized? We don't need that. Uh, these, traditions, these traditions have lived for centuries. Um, so they don't need the Western notation. Uh, just talk to each other, share with each other, express with each other, communicate. Uh, even though we are in a in a in a on internet, we are not physically together right now. We are kind of together. We are sharing, talking with each other. That's that's uh, that's how it should be, in my opinion. Live, you know, alive, lively connected uh so so yeah that that's why well i i i, I got crazy again uh mg 7.92 hello thanks for joining uh i'm i'm glad you are here and it seems you are from inner mongolia that's so cool i'm so glad thanks for joining um let's see as a person from inner mongolia we do keep our traditional mongolian script as well uh-huh we also have some different style of song in different region in inner mongolia yeah um and and that's also awesome that in inner mongolia uh they they keep this mongol writing super alive uh it's not dying uh now in mongolia uh it start to 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 i would say to revive there is kind of a revival of it uh, but a lot of people they they really struggle writing it read it and all that so in our mongolian um they are really in our mongols they are really um keeping this this knowledge this culture alive so this is also super super great and Actually, to make the different, to, to talk again about this notation, Western notation, for example, we might have the same melody between uh, the Mongols and the inner Mongols. 
but the two they don't play they 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 play totally differently so maybe the western notation would give the same melody for the two but how do we play it because the 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 mongols and the inner mongols they they have totally different style of playing the the as blaviken said the soul is different the the culture even though it's close you know it's like the alta tuba kazakh mongol inner mongol uh, kazmuk buryat it's all a uh, uh, maybe uh, it's crazy to say one big family, but they are very close to each other, but still super different from each other. So by converting all that with Western notation, I think that we would lose the color of each of these um, tribes. If I, uh, I don't know how to say each of these uh, culture. Yeah, I, I guess culture is the right word. Um, so they would play all the same way with the, while reading the Western notation. But one song, for example, um, well, I, I don't know what example we could say, but one song that would be played from the West Mongolia and the East Mongolia, maybe Inner Mongolia and maybe the Buryat and, and so on, on the, on the notation that might be the same note, but the feeling would be totally different. So that's why we need to, to, to share all that with videos, with recordings, with explanation also, not just the recording, share the knowledge behind and have this interaction and have this question and answer because when we write a book, we don't think about all the questions that people can ask sometimes. We just put the information, but sometimes it's lacking. Some things are missing. So the interaction is always, always the human interaction, the connection with other person, other cultures, I have questions and all that. That's the best way to, to transmit. And, and, and same with the MG was talking about the, the, the traditional Mongol script. I don't, I mean, uh, we thought someone explaining a little bit, talking, showing how to write and all that. It's, there is some books to learn, but it's so specific. It's so awesome. It's so rich. Um, I, I don't know anyone uh, that write the Mongol Bichik and that learn without connection or without asking anything to anyone, just using a book. It doesn't exist. There is always... Um, subtilities that we need to know, you know, it's like learning a, a, a language only using uh, the dictionary. That that's not possible. That it's too rich um, to to be to be uh, condensed in a book or or something like that. So so yeah. Anyway, I got crazy again. <laughs> um, MG again. For example, my teacher in Ulaanbaatar. And in Inner Mongols, teach me how to play chan chants that differently. Yeah, of course, it's it's the same instrument, but it's two different world. I mean, it, it's so different. And the chants is actually also close to the shamisen, which is in Japan. And and the the, the Japanese they play the the shamisen again in in a totally different manner. So and if we take the piano an instrument like the piano, how many kind of style of music there is on this one instrument. Just think about that. Between the blues, the jazz, the rock and roll, uh, the classical music and, and the country. And pff, there is so many, so many different kinds of, of, of music. So the notes are the same. So we need the live thing, uh, the book and, and all that. It's not, it's not gonna be enough. <laughs> so that, that was a little bit of out of the subject I will drink a little bit but yeah definitely we need to keep this interaction this lively uh, exchange and, and share like that and to get back to Ernesto um, definitely you are more than welcome to send a bunch of questions um, you have a you have an interactive book at your disposal. 
I am always super glad to help. And if you join on Discord, there is 300 or so person that are also passionate, uh, that have, have different kind of level. They also always happy to share what they know and all that. So I think it's better than a book, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so definitely join us and learn with us in, uh, in all that. Uh, ah, yeah, MG about the Mongot Bichik. Mongot Bichik, the big problem for me, it's hard to type it on computer. This is a pain. Uh, that's, I, I want to write in Mongot Bichik on the computer all the time. But I've installed, um, I would say, I've installed three or four applications. I try to install fonts and stuff, and, and it's, it's so bad. I mean, like, it's so bad. The, it's not working. Uh, actually, I was writing with another person that, um, that used that write the Moral Bichik on the computer. We were chatting. And then she uh, write me, but why you miss uh, some letter sometimes? And then I'm like, what? Like it was Sam Beno, you know? Uh, and I'm like, what? I, I, I didn't write Sam Beno correctly in Moral Bichik. And then I, I check again and say, yeah, of course, that's right. So we talk, um, we talk like that for maybe half an hour. And then, that's so strange. Why? And so on. Then I make a screenshot of my screen. I sent it to her and actually she was not seeing the, 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 the same thing that I was writing. So on my screen, on my computer, that was right. But when she uh, received it on her side, that was not right anymore. So how do we write? How do we communicate like that? <laughs> That's like write, writing you are. So in my in my uh, computer, that's right. And then the person that read, it's like one O is missing, one R is missing. So it's like super. Uh, it's not it's not right yet. The the Mongol Bichik. So definitely MG, uh, I I feel you. Uh, this Mongol Bichik issue is super complicated because I think someone told me that um, there is a difference between the official Windows. Uh, the crack, the act windows, the Apple version, uh, and it's not all read uh, the same way. So cross-platform, uh, it's not interpreted the same. So it's super, it's super difficult. And then of course, the fact that it's written vertically for the chat and all that, that's a little bit, <laughs> that's a little bit complicated. So yeah, I don't know. Crazy Grim, the day Steve, plays Murderhood with Batzorik will be the day Chinggis Khan comes back to her. <laughs> well, I don't know if it will happen. Then you will, you will, you might need to talk with Batzorik about that. <laughs> well, that, that could be nice, actually. Uh, let's see if uh, if Batzorik see this live one day and feel like, oh, maybe I could I could sing Homi with uh, Steve playing the Murderhorn. That would be that would be nice feature, actually. Uh, let's see if Tengir uh, hear your prayer. <laughs> let's bring back Chinggis Khan. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, why not? Well, actually, yeah, I don't know about the, the um, um, how to say, uh, well, I lost my thought. <laughs> I got, I got totally emotional. So, so yeah. Ah, yeah. I was thinking that would be nice to do some feature, um, because I'm mostly a little bit alone. That would be nice to make some exchange and all that between uh, all other YouTuber and maybe make some shared podcast or something. Uh, that would be cool also to have a bit of Mongol, a little bit of Mongolian. Mongol language in the live or the podcast or the video or whatever and a bit of English maybe a little bit of French and all so I don't know that that would be that would be great so so yeah MG again before Marcus from Germany was also in Mongol he might join also uh, okay <laughs> yeah anyway uh, all the person that are watching 
this live that enjoy the content and, and the mood and, and all that, just join us on Discord. And, and even though we are not spamming the chat all day, except for Ono that is sharing a lot of mem. <laughs> Uh, but he, he calmed down recently. Uh, but yeah, it's like very joyful. We share a lot. We talk a lot, and and not just Mongols, but uh, other folk culture, and sometimes a little bit of archaeology, history, world history, and all that. So it's super, it's super friendly. So if you are new, uh, if you, if today is the first time you are watching this live, uh, the link to the Discord community is in the description. Um, and, and, and join us there. So MG, sorry. No, I said that Marcus was also the person on TV shows that he might join you to play music. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know who Marcus uh, is. I only know Marcus Miller, the bassist. <laughs> but yeah, Marcus, uh, if there is a person that uh, he, he, he wants to make some collaboration, definitely we can talk about it. Uh, I'm pretty open. If I'm usually staying kind of in the tra traditional um, circle uh, because the way I play, it's complicated for me, uh, as you know, to play modern things on the mud road. We, my, my habit and style is super traditional. Uh, but if uh, my style can be, uh, I would say, suitable for other musicians and other projects, all that, definitely I would be super happy to, to share. Uh, I'll summon Alton Nergui to the gang too. He's one of the best horse archer I have ever seen. Whoa. Uh, yeah, okay. That, that would be actually great to have like some archery master uh, in, the, in the Discord or in the community to, to share information about archery. Uh, because even me, I'm, I'm super interested. I, I just did a little bit to get some base. But... More, uh, I would say, um, netting. I have the Mongolian words coming in my head all the time. Uh, more specific uh, information would be definitely super great. And who knows? I'm sure there is other person uh, interested uh, with the archery in the Discord. That would be maybe uh, in, in, in uh, a way to maybe send uh, bows uh, or something. Ah, I don't know. So. Thumb Draw Gang welcomes you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so it's been almost two hours again. It was so... We talked a lot today. That was super great. Um, MG is asking, uh, and I think it might be the last question of today's live, is asking how many language I can speak. I guess that was uh, asking uh, to me. I can speak uh, three language, I guess. So French, which I tend to forget a little bit. English, which I speak uh, almost every day. Uh, and Mongol, of course, which I speak uh, the most now. Uh, but my, my best language now might be uh, English. I, on writing uh, perspective, that might be English now, uh, because I did I, I barely speak French. I speak French only with my parents uh, once in a while. I mean, once a week, or we chat a little bit every day, but we don't talk too much. Uh, and I have one or two friends that that speak French, which I I talk sometimes also, but mostly I I talk in English. Um, and and of course uh, I use the more language uh, a lot so now um yeah i would say my mongol is starting to uh, catch up with my french and my english so i really hope to be super good in 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 um in um, in mongol uh soon as soon as i can i really try so so yeah and in in the mongol uh well i know how to write the Mongol with the Latin, with the Cyrillic, and with the Mongol Bichik. So let's say that's free, free language and, and, and for the Mongol free writing, free different writing. So and I, I can talk a little bit of the geek <laughs> because I played video game a lot. So the emoji, this kind of stuff. And, and that's kind of it. I know a few words of German, 
uh, of Japanese because I watch Japanese a lot, uh, German because I went to German class all my scholarity for like 10 years or something. So I know a few words, but I, I, I'm not sure I can... I can uh, compose uh, one sentence, <laughs> shame on me. And, and yeah, that's kind of it. I, I'm not super good with language. So, so yeah, I just know a little bit. <laughs> Bla weekend. Oubliez pas le français. <laughs> oui, je vais essayer de pas l'oublier. <laughs> um, Gichte, bien, de France, France, quel c'est un hier, chatoué, bolso. Uh, so, well, I think um, that's it uh, for today. I hope, as usual, that uh, you had a good time, that it was cool, that you learned uh, interesting things, that it was satisfying to what you are looking for from uh, this YouTube channel. So definitely, if you enjoyed, if you liked, push the thumb up, subscribe push the notification bell uh, to get um, uh, to get the information when new videos and new lives are uh, being released. And if you want uh, more information, more interaction, especially between the lives, you can join the Discord channel, uh, the Discord server, sorry. Um, you can share with the community and all that. So definitely you are more than welcome, even if you don't play Meruhur, even if you uh, don't have Meruhur, uh, if you just want to share about the culture uh, or the language or, or other things that are kind of connected to the Mongol culture in general, uh, definitely you are more than welcome to join us. And if you want to support, you can make a subscription on my website or you can uh, order some stuff from me. I, I'm always super happy to share and to help. So yeah, I think that's it. Thanks again uh, for joining today. And until next time, may the blessing of the eternal blue sky be upon you. Bye-bye.